Hi, my name is Justice, and I want to show you how I garden gourds. Going from a seed to this to this. The garden's doing an amazing thing this year uh, by giving me all the stages at once, so to speak. And so I can show you the different stages of growth uh, as we're gardening gourds because all of the stages exist in the garden at the same time right now. And so it's kind of beautiful. I'll show you. Now, of course, I laid these here as an example, but this is what gourd seeds look like. They're a couple centimeters big, and that's what they look like. And then when they pop up, they pop up with just a little a little thing in the center and two little leaves. Uh, and then they start immediately, they grow really fast and they start to make these leaves. And, and then they get bigger and make more leaves and some grass growing on the fence line. <laughs> and then here we are, uh, they begin to vine and that's why they need to be planted next to a trellis or where they have a lot of room to just expand. But you can see already on this tiny plant that it already intends to make fruit. And so here's a couple, and these were all planted at the same time, by the way. So they germinate and come up as they, um, you know, on their own time. So this is the west side of the fence and the gourds. Now here we have one, this is one plant from one seed planted on the east side of the fence and just a matter of about a month before the west side gourds were planted. And that these, this plant, this one seed has gotten so big and so beautiful and it's growing gourds from top to bottom. Here's at the bottom and moving up the fence line then we see all different stages of growth on this one plant from top to bottom. Here's one right at the top. And so this is what they look like uh, while they're still flowering and growing and vining gourd plants. The vines on a gourd plant, every vine can reach upwards of 50 feet or more. They take up some space. So if you plant them, then beware. And also <laughs> they produce heavily. So also beware of that. You'll get a lot of gourds out of one seed. And then at the end of the season, when the weather, when the heat goes away, then you pluck them off the plant. You throw them under the porch or in the dark shade of a, of a, carport and let them basically just rot for the winter and come spring they'll look like this and they're wood sandpapering them down turn them into musical instruments like maracas uh, in, in the smaller ones uh, we can drill a hole in them and hollow them out a little bit dump the seeds out and the birds uh, that's why they're called birdhouse gourds. Cut them and sand them, line them with beeswax or uh, a finishing agent, and they are beautiful bowls. And here's an example of one that's finished that was never opened. Uh, and it was just sanded off and finished with some spray on lacquer. And they just turn out beautiful and you know, this one of course is bigger. Uh, this gourd is 15 years old and uh, it looks exactly like it did the day that it was given to me. These are the many stages of growing gourds. Uh, what we've had to do for them is uh, mainly just pulling the weeds and watering the seeds. Uh, one thing, when you plant them, then I have learned by experience that when you soak the seeds overnight, then they germinate uh, much quicker and more prevalently. When you soak the seeds in water, the ones that sink to the bottom 
are the good seeds. The ones that rise to the surface, those are the floaters and they're not going to do anything for you. And so soaking the seeds overnight before planting them does a service to you in that way also. It'll identify for you which seeds even had a chance to grow. And in my experience, even, you know, we plant all of the good seeds in the cup. And in my experience, even not all of the good seeds will grow. And so plant as many <laughs> as you would want to. But what we do is plant two in each hole sometimes or three. Uh, the more seeds you plant, the more chances you have. And the more chances you have, then the higher yield of harvest that you have a potential for. And the one who plants in abundance, harvests in abundance, according to the word of God. So, This is the garden storage area of our open tractor barn. And this is the gourds that we did in our 2022 season. And this is crown of thorns gourds, which I'm excited to do some work with these. And, you know, they just dried in a box all winter. And this is where they've been sitting the whole time. They haven't been moved. And so this is what they look like after wintering. And we didn't plant very many, like I said, because in our 2021 garden, this is what one single seed pack gave us. It's just this big, huge bin that's full. And there's hundreds of them in there. And we've only processed some uh, because, you know, sanding each one individually, it's fun, but also it's time consuming. It's a good thing to do, you know, on the day off and or sitting by the campfire so that's what we've kind of done and and figured out you know some just silly little uses for them you know they've broken open the seeds that we planted this year came from our own gourds that we'd planted before real quick craft idea example uh, if you want one is a cup in a bowl from a gourd by making three cuts and that would be finding the flattest spot and cutting level on the board to make the bowl at the bottom then cutting again level where it stands um, at that base and that way what you have you know once of course you cut the stem is the bowl at the bottom separate from a stand that holds the round bottom cup and so there's a quick example of how you could make a cup and a bowl out of a round bottom and round top gourd. I think one of the coolest things about having a garden is that in the Bible, then the garden really is where heaven and earth met. So that's one of the things that I've learned is that when you're gardening, it really does feel like you're really close to heaven. And especially when things go right. But the reason why there's so many different stages of growth, I think, in the garden is because when something doesn't go right, then you have to try something else. You keep on trying. So there's a little bit of heartbreak that sometimes comes from uh, gardening. And when a seed fails or when an entire crop fails, and, uh, and that does happen. So uh, as far as pests are concerned with gourds, then I haven't found any that have attacked ours. Um, you know, the regular fruit flies that occasionally come through or whatever like that, but nothing that has attacked the gourds and, and caused a problem with their growth or harvest. So there's that, and, you know, they're, they're kind of low maintenance, uh, especially the way that we've done it, just leaving them until fall and harvesting them all at one time then that's been a beautiful part of um, just learning that sometimes then the plant just knows exactly what to do, how long to do it, and you know, the seed just grows. Adjacent to the large east garden one, and then those that have been planted on the west side of the fence, we also have some open field gourds planted in rows about eight feet apart over here so that they've got plenty of room to spread out across the ground. We cleared the weeds one last time and we've got a few to pick right up here uh, before the gourds really just start spreading and taking over. 
The good thing about when they spread and take over, the weeds don't really grow in the shadow of them, which is fantastic. So there's a few ideas and a few examples and what I know about growing gourds and how we've done it here. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. God bless.